Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm excited to discuss a new product release that I feel is one of those I gotcha moment products where I feel that everyone's toolbox should have one at least uh, for setting up their CNC robot, and that is my new bullseye level. Now, what we usually see in the industry when it comes to assembling anything with robotics, whether it be a plasma table, a mill, a router, is that the instructions typically say, hey, assemble the chassis this way. You see all kinds of videos all over YouTube with a guy just putting the screws in and they assume that the chassis is done. For my novice guys out there, that's the beginning of the process. And when I say the beginning, you have to set up the chassis as you go to make sure your gantry is level to your actual uh, spoil board or your actual chassis frame. That means your x-axis when it comes across we want to make sure that you're not teetering on either side to make sure that the unit is level. That being said your, your spoil board if we look here and you see the level is actually off your spoil board if this was my CNC chassis you'd want to make sure it's perfectly perpendicular to your spindle. For that matter you also want to make sure your spindle is also perpendicular to your actual spoil board or your CNC chassis base. Why is that important? Well, we want to make sure that when we're cutting, we're not on an angle. And again, that brings forth a whole slew of other problems. But covering just those minor details, where we want a precision level with uh, precision measurements and a way to simply go through and measure not one but two axes, I have right here a Starrett number 135. Now, for those of you not familiar with Starrett, they're an amazing company in Massachusetts. I love their tools. Been around forever. Uh, this is their number 135. And the problem with this level, the only problem, is that it only measures one axis. So you can see here we've got the bottom that's all machined and you can angle it any way you like. Uh, but a lot of guys use these for setting up their system and they work well, but you're only measuring one axis. So if you're trying to measure both axes, your X and Y positioning, you want a bullseye level. And again, what makes this level so unique is number one, it's a glass vial. This is not the same stuff you see coming over from China that's using a plastic vial. Glass vials are much more accurate. Um, the other thing is this accuracy is calibrated by one of the world's leading manufacturers in bubble levels uh, out of the UK. This is not made in China. Um, and it is calibrated to 20 minutes to 2 millimeters, or the accuracy equivalent of 0.333 of a degree. Once again, 0.333 of a degree. So when you lay this down, it's measuring both axes, and the idea is you naturally want to get that bubble dead center in that red circle. That's what we're looking for. If you tilt it this way, you're going to see the bubble go everywhere. If you tilt it this way, once again, we're measuring two different axes. So very unique level. It does have uh, an actual chrome plated finish. This is real chrome. You can see how the bottom is. It's perfectly sealed. You use this in many, many different applications. I have clients that have been requesting them for uh, gun projects where they're trying to level scopes, level Picatinny rails. Um, basically, whatever you're trying to do to give something um, a perfect level uh, assembly where we're actually leveling it in two axes simultaneously. Now I have a direct purpose of using this myself for a new component I'll be releasing shortly, but um, overall this is the type of level I highly recommend when you are setting up your CNC because once again you are taking simultaneously dual measurements to make sure everything is square with one another. If you get this bubble level you are going to know independently which axis is off. That's why a bullseye level is so amazing when it's calibrated and when, of course, it's used in the proper fashion. And again, when you're setting up your gantry on each point of the gantry where it actually makes connection to your actual chassis, this should be used. So we make sure the gantry is not, once again, having a high spot on either end. Setting up your spindle. There are always going to be a flat bottom on your spindle as far as where the back uh, spindle cable actually connects. You can just lay this on top and it'll tell you exactly where your spindle is in reference to your actual gantry. Super information to know. So again, 
I tried to keep the pricing as cheap as possible for what this is. Once again, this is an imported unit. This is not something that I take lightly because, again, I'm very critical of my tools. I want something that I know is going to give you the accuracy I use myself. And, the, uh, and, and again, to give you an endless array of applications because I know... A lot of my gun clients ask me all the time, uh, they were aware I was going to release a bubble level and they were wondering when it was going to happen. Um, luckily, I started working with this company and I'm very, very impressed with the quality of the products. Once again, you can see how this is made. It is just a beautiful unit. And again, you can attach these in a multitude of different ways. You can use uh, tape. I'm not a big fan of that, mainly because the tape can give on certain access points. Uh, you can certainly use magnets. Uh, you can use anything you want to attach this with. I get questions on that a lot as far as um, what do I recommend if you were to actually, uh, actually try to bond something to it. Epoxy, two-part epoxy works extremely well. Keep in mind, if you were to use a JB Weld epoxy, it has steel in it, so it would actually be uh, it would actually flow towards the magnet because the magnet is actually going to uh, grab itself towards the steel. Um, but I prefer to use a silicone bonding agent like a silicone gel that works extremely well. But keep in mind when you do place a magnet on this unit, you want to make sure that you're doing it in a level reference point, and that means that you'd want to naturally keep the level as level as possible when it's being attached so that you know everything is correlated. This is really the best way to do it. So again, we've got everything here now I feel that you need as far as assembling your system in as far as actually using hardware to actually go in and check all of your reference points as you're assembling your CNC. And the other key point that very few manufacturers discuss, and I'm just going to bring it up here, it has nothing to do with a level, make sure you guys are using Loctite. Because Loctite on every screw, CNC's all vibrate, I don't care how well it's made. Make sure you're using blue Loctite on every screw. And if your chassis does come pre-assembled, you should be contacting the vendor to make sure they are using Loctite because nothing sucks worse than having screws vibrate loose. If, of course, they are not already using a nylon lock washer, where, once again, or lock nut, where it actually has the nylon insert. That's an imperative thing. But again, staying in comparison, a bullseye level, in comparison to a single axis level, you can see what you have here. And I, once again, want to thank everybody for your support. Take care.